the word became flesh to be gracious to us. And it was a grace that was shaped by truth, not, not by compromising truth. It's not, a, it's not a wishy-washy grace. It's not an unprincipled grace. It's not a sentimental grace. There is a lot of sentimental, wishy-washy grace flying around in the evangelical world. So many people do not have a biblical understanding of God's grace because grace, if it's God's, is always paired with truth. It's a grace that is always vindicating truth. It's a grace that's always holding fast to God's truthfulness and his faithfulness to his own worth and infinite glory. It's a righteous grace. It's a God-exalting grace. It is a costly grace. And this grace is going to lead us straight to the cross of Christ because at the cross we see the only place where truth can stand and grace can stand. God cannot simply wipe away my sin and your sin. He, he, he cannot simply say, listen, we're just going to let bygones be bygones. You're forgiven. It's all right. Go about your business. He, he, can't, he can't do that because a grace that is God's grace is paired with truth. And truth says that the glory of the infinite God has been defamed. His name has been trampled in the dirt. His honor has been slandered. His righteousness has been reviled. His purposes have been rejected. His word has been broken. And his truth, his justice demands my punishment. And yet he's so gracious. He's so full of grace. So what does he do? He clothes himself in humanity. He clothes himself in flesh so that he can die. And he can pay the price that his justice demands. See, it's at the cross that we see that he can justify us without becoming unjust himself. 